and welcome. So Dave uh, is asking, you know, still no music for that intro? I mean, don't you know by now that we arrive early and we need something to groove to, you know, whether it be like this or this. What's this? The washing machine or the cabbage patch? I don't, I don't remember. And then there's the running man. We got to bust out all those moves before the stream starts, you know, get like pumped up, you know? And then sometimes I de-pump by uh, making you guys watch a whole bunch of glue dry, you know? So we're gonna try and avoid that today. In fact, I believe all the glue drying is done. So I think we're ready to finally get started wiring and just to kind of like review what was going on last week. Last week, we kind of had a good stream and then right after the cameras were off, things took a turn for the worst. So let's see here. You can see the beauteous dragon. And so last time we actually did a pretty good job of individually making a couple flames, but then gluing the flames on. So we did a couple coming out of his mouth and then we created kind of like a fan effect where the fire and the mage's magic collide. You know, we had tried to do this, you know, with our first rendition using a deviled egg, you know, container up in here. And I do love my deviled eggs. I think this turned out pretty good. I just didn't really like this area very much and the fact that you can totally see the wires and by me trying to disguise it, I think I kind of made it worse, you know, and even more visible. So that's just kind of like set off to the side as, as a reminder, you know? You know, it's, it's, it's okay to, to prototype uh, and then eventually get there, you know? All right, so hopefully also today we are streaming to the correct video URL, you know, not like last time where I started the stream and it like streamed into the ether. So if that's the case and you are actually watching me on this correct URL, do let me know. Uh, I got a good ways through my intro and then it was like silence, silence. <laughs> and Bounty Hunter breaks saying, I'm here. All right. So that's a good sign. That's a good sign. So hopefully uh, we're all in the right place and I'm not floating off in the ether somewhere. All right. And, um, oh, I am jealous. Bounty Hunter saying, uh, I'm all caught up on, uh, Book of Boba Fett. Mm, no spoilers. No spoilers. You know, um, that's my Friday night. Do not be jamming up my Friday night. So yes, I had forgotten that like Wednesdays are Book of Boba Fett night. You know, you can't, can't like step on that, but you know, my TV viewing times are on Friday. So uh, Dave is saying you are good to go. All right, so we are in the same universe, you know? So like I was saying, basically, we had done a good job of getting a couple of the LEDs. We even like strung them together. All was going really well. We created our fan blast effect right here. Uh, and then the stream was over. I was like, I'm not gonna subject you guys to any more glue drying. I'll finish putting on the rest of them and then we can wire on Thursday last Thursday, you know. Uh, well, that didn't work out too well. As I started to kind of mess with the wires, I noticed that the lights would turn on and off depending on the position of the wires. And we all know what that means. It means that somewhere in there, there be a broken wire. And remember how much uh, we had to really fight to get the insulation off. We tried you know, knifing it to death, you know, scraping it with the craft knife. I tried this sandpaper, which is kind of like a, maybe a hundred grit. And then I tried this very fine sanding block, you know, for paint. Uh, but all in all, these wires are so tiny and fragile that when you start to remove that insulation, it starts to get weaker and weaker. So we're going to try and take a different tactic, you know, different tactical approach right here, which was to glue all this and so I did this on my own not to subject you guys to any more glue drying but we're going to try and run all the wires along the bottom where hopefully they'll be hidden enough you know they're going to be totally hidden they're going to be hidden enough the original idea I think is more like clean and textbook which is combining the wires as you know they come in contact with each other so you're only ever running one wire and all the wires are kind of like sequentially tapping in uh to that wire and it doesn't mean it have to be the same wire with all of them tapping in as long as they're sequentially tapping in uh, to the longest wire the problem there is that it creates a lot of junctures that then start moving and can snap off so instead this is going to be a little bit messier but i think it's going to be 
playing it a little more safe. Uh, so you'll notice that I actually managed, these resistors are so tiny, I managed to pretty much get one on each wire, I think. Uh, so, you know, because by the time the resistors bundle up, we'll pretty much be at the very end. So it kind of all worked out fortuitously. So our objective for today is to combine all of this, positive with positive, negative with negative. And we're going to see, hopefully we can get through it all, uh, and then will make a positive trunk and a negative trunk. Now I went ahead and tested, found the positive and the negative of each of our LEDs here and made sure the LED was illuminating. So we don't have any LEDs at this point. Now, in the future from now, we don't know. But let's start, you know, this process. I have the uh, soldering iron here firing up or it's not because it's not plugged in. So uh, in typical Rachel fashion, like, I got everything ready to go. Oh, but, you know, maybe plugging it in might be helpful. And let me fire up the fan over here. Out of view a little bit. All right. So I think this is going to look really cool. If you look at the close-up, you're going to notice that maybe there's a couple bare spots. Now, the only thing that I did not do with this yet, because I want to make sure it works before we do it, is add in our blank flames, you know, and our blank magic effects that cover the rest of the missing areas. As much as I would like to line this up with LEDs from head to toe, like all touching each other and not leave not one bare spot without an LED, this pro this is going to become a problem here. So I tried to strategically place them out where they're not like at a metric distance from each other, you know, like a robot, but they're kind of like naturally placed and we'll use the blank glues to let that uh, light spill from one LED to kind of like reach the other LED because we know it can travel through the glue. So that's kind of like the idea. So if there's a couple bare spots or this looks a little bare here, that's the reason why. I pretty much went with the maximum amount of LEDs that I thought I could get away with and still have some kind of like controllable situation here. So I'm going to back you, whoop, back you guys on out just a little bit so you get more of a, a view of uh, the totality of this rat's nest that we're going to try and sort out. So now that our situation here is getting hot, and by situation I mean our soldering iron, I'm going to move our little helping hands close by. And he may not be completely in view. One of the things this table has a lot of is these glue particles. Now, I've left them all up on the table because I find them quite useful, you know, and uh, it could be, and you can see it like all up in here, uh, because they make some great effects for later on. If I'm finding I'm missing like a cool mage effect, you know, this is kind of a neat globule here. This would be nice to, to use as a blank. Uh, same thing with, uh, this one's a little bit dirty, but same thing with this one. We can use that as a blank. So I've been collecting some of the more interesting shapes that have kind of naturally globulated on my table here. So this is a precious area. We're not going to mess with that. Uh, all right. So now that this is heated up, I think the easiest thing to do is start in the back here, uh, closest to his mouth, and work our way forward and, uh, you know, go tying these things up. Uh, you know, I'm going to leave these for last because obviously look how long these are. So we're going to try and move them out of the way as much as possible and dance around them. So I think for me to be able to see, I'm going to move this guy around so I can get, I can get in here and I'll bring you guys in a little closer and perhaps even move myself. Let's get me out of the way there. So you guys have maximum view and, uh, Oh, Bounty Hunter, time to trademark Globulated. Yes, that's a good one. My my precious globs, precious. I love that. That was a, my exact face when I opened up that packaging and I saw like all those cool little uh, resistors and LEDs and uh, all the organization that Dave has gone through to organize all of his LEDs. Uh, so... Uh, it looks like these guys here are kind of the first uh, victims. And now I know that the positive leads are the ones with the resistor. So that's going to help me identify what's going on here. So let's see. And uh, perhaps mayhaps putting on the eyes is, is a good way to go. 
So let's see here. This is a neg negatory. So I have these two positives right here that we can uh, start putting together. And I just want to make sure here's a blank. And so, okay, so that's the negative of this bulb right here. And I'm going to go look on this side. And that's the negative of this bulb. All right, making sure we're doing negative with negative. And if you look very closely, let me see if I can lean this guy a tiny bit. You'll notice like, especially like maybe right here, that I was able to put tiny, tiny heat shrinks and I painted them white, you know, just to kind of avoid any type of uh, shorts that we may encounter. Uh, but I'm thinking what I'm going to do is not ins basically insulate the positive from beginning to end. So we're going to go without heat shrink and we're going to put that at the end. One for the positive, big old long one or a bunch of tiny sequential ones. And then one for the negative. So what I have to do with this guy is bend him all the way forward. And let me see if I can give you guys a much better view through here. No, that's even worse. That's like way, way far away. All right. So the first part of this might be a bit rough, but as we kind of get in here, it should be a little bit easier to see. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab, because I don't want to tug on these LEDs much, and I'm going to lose the chair, and I'm just going to like, you know, crab walk as I walk, the, you know, as I work. We're going to just crab walk around the project like this, all low, low and, and crab-like. And we're just going to, I'm going to get this out of the way so I don't solder my hair to the project, which has happened, by the way. <laughs> it has indeed happened before. All right. You get into a project and you don't realize uh and sometimes you weren't planning to solder so you know you didn't you didn't plan hair day for your project properly so let's see here what just broke off do you guys see this it's a resistor did it just break off somewhere it better not have because i came up with a trick it did indeed right here look See this lonely guy? The resistor broke off of it. We'll get to him. I'm going to put him over here. So one of the things I did with putting the resistors on the ends was I wrapped the resistor further up to the insulated part to make a really long kind of joint. So we have metal to metal and then the resistor continues winding up, up on the insulation uh, just so we don't get this problem. And I know exactly where this came from. Um, not not just because this broke off, but there was a wire that didn't have an uninsulated portion. It must have broken off or something. I took sandpaper and again, I sat here sanding off the insulation and then put this on. And that's where, yep, the sanding off of that insulation definitely weakens it. So this one may not have a resistor until much, much later in the process. So let's see here. Starting with this guy, I'm going to try and bend him a full, like almost a 180. Have him do a 180 up and half by moving these negatories out of the way in a way that they're not going to short. So, assume crab position. And let's see what I got going on here. Now I like these because they're coming off the big LEDs and the big LEDs are much more resistant to breaking and little wire breaking messes. So these are ready to be wound. Let me just move this little positive out of the way. We're basically going to wind and, and solder and wind and solder. And all oh, the concentration, people. The concentration. 
and if any of the little flames pop off, that's okay. That's the easy part, is uh, gluing them back on. So we can see here that I have my first connection for positives, and we may even uh, test this. Let's test this with a battery, which I separated over here. So that's one. And you can hopefully see it light up in the back there. And that's the other. Where is he? Yep, he's lighting up in the other back. That guy. Oops. And that's that guy. All right, so we have confirmation that this connection worked to the best of our abilities. Now, I'm going to go ahead and solder this situation here, which is a bit tough to see, but we're about to make our first solder. And I'm super bummed that that. Um, Resistor came off. Just goes to show they're very, very sensitive. So the wires are just very, they're very delicate. You can't speak harshly to them. All right, let's start gathering our other resistor situation so let's see what else we got here what we got all right i'm just digging around and i had kind of put things with a resistor on one end here's a resistor and here's a oh those are negatives we don't want those going to be a lot of let's go through this rat's nest type of stream and getting this out of here little uh, glue particles tendrils if you will all right so now this can tap into this this guy right here and let me see if I can maybe move this camera here because I think you guys would get an awesome view if there was like a camera and I'm just going to be like all oh, hovering up all on you guys. Um, so Dave is saying check your stream. It didn't uh, it didn't like putting your hair up. Oh, no, I wonder if I hit the you know, I might have just like hit the camera when I was doing it. Um, it's better now. Did it get jumpy for your uh, BHB but cleared up? Yes. Indeed, I think it did. If not, then it was just me. So hopefully, yeah, if any funkiness with the stream uh, happens, let me know. Now, the cord here. Let's see. Where are you going? Give me a sec here. Because I just had this idea and I think it's going to make our lives a ton easier. So... I'm going to go ahead and unplug this side camera right here. I'm going to have to crawl in behind the computer uh, to plug in this Ethernet extension. That should allow me to bring this camera like literally right in the hot mess that I'm working on. That way you guys aren't like just getting the above view and she's like, she's doing something down there. I don't know what the heck she, you know, she's doing. So I'll be right back. Let me keep it on this view so you guys don't go into blackness. Uh, once I unplug this camera over here, so crawly crawl, and out you go. And let's see if I can find the ethernet port, which is always the challenge. There we go, ethernet port found. And all right, I am both 
the tech person, the streamy person, the buildy person, and the host, and the coming up with the ideas person. Well, you guys do a lot of that actually, you know, tell me what you want to see. All right, so I've plugged in this camera and I'm going to move it here. And this should be like awesome. This should show you guys exactly what it is I'm doing. So now I'm going to go ahead and um, there we go. All right, so I'm going to switch on this camera and you guys might see blackness because I might have to like reset it up and that only takes like a minute. So uh, be right back. Be right back as I set up this camera. Moving things out of the way. Making life a little bit easier. All right. Let me just get this a little bit better into here. And I'm going to go ahead and switch. Oh, it worked right out of the box. Oh, no, it didn't. It's frozen on the wrong view. So uh, give me a sec here as I deactivate it and reactivate it. All right, you should see uh, it's total blackness here for a second. Total blackness. seeing why it's uh it's a little sleepy i'm gonna remove this let's add it back again oh i know what's happening there we go oh my gosh it's super tiny it's super tiny Let's, uh, let's not have it be tiny. Let me fix that here for a sec. There we go. Still a little tiny, but we'll, we'll work it. We'll work it. Let me go ahead and make this uh, bigger. There we go. That should work. Let me see if I can get this. Uh, just some uh, technical thingy ma jigs that I'm uh, working out. There we go. So here I come back. All right. After all that. All right. So I'm going to bring this guy a little closer because it'll make it uh, easier for me as well. And hopefully now you guys have a much better view of what's going on. Woohoo! All right. Some uh, technical issues there, but we've uh, we've done it. So ooh, I'm going to be largely uh, off camera, I think. Uh, so it'll be the Jazz Hands Show. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. Low res camera, yeah. So this is a, a 4K webcam, actually, but for whatever reason, it was just giving me the option of doing 1080. So I don't, yeah. the The other option went away. So I'm gonna have to look into that uh, once we're done here and see what the heck is uh, what the heck is going on. All right, so you can see I got my double bundle right there, and now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do this guy because he seems to be next in line uh, right here. And uh, we got a couple negatories here. So that guy's a little bit long. We can wait on him. And here's another, uh, another positive right there. So I think we can go ahead and get this guy wrapped up in this mess and 
I'm trying to do everything as tightly as possible. Hopefully the camera's not blurring out too much. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and solder this situation right there. So we have one, two, three resistors. And I'm just totally working behind you guys right now. And uh, let me grab this situation right here. Got my trusty little fan. And let's get back on to it. Let's see if I can squeeze in here the most, most awkward soldering ever. moving the fan a bit so it hits us a little bit and you can see the fan is doing its thing because we got a glue wisp right there spirit fingers indeed we are like spiriting it up all right so we're making our way now somehow I need to connect this guy right here so let's get to him and I'm just making sure I'm not missing any of these precious my precious little gold guys like this guy right here wanted to cause all kinds of issues little issues so I'm going to put him down there and in fact I'm going to kind of maybe get these guys more visible like don't forget me all right but now I need to somehow this guy here is a negative so he can move out of the way with his negative attitude. And here we go. So I'm gonna push this guy here. It almost serves to kind of like clamp the, the wiring together, which is kind of nice. And push that going the right way. Probably should have gotten both of these going before soldering, but that I just soldered. Well, that's okay. All right, so I'm going to try and get in. I'm going to pull this out and solder that little piece now. All right. Hopefully the uh, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back around you guys. I tried to go like in front of your face, which is like super rude. I got this idea from the tabletop cam when we were doing a lot of the sculpting of the dragon, and I'm like, there's got to be a better way to like put you guys like right in front of me. So this was the first. That was the first test of the tabletop cam. Then I'm like, I need like a permanent one where I can just bust it out at any moment. So now I'm going to leave this extension on there in case that way we can move it all around the table. So here you see I'm grabbing another one here with a resistor. And I'm going to start to shift you guys kind of this way. And this is like one of those hard goosenecks. So I'm jerking you all over the place. Now this could be a problem because I need to get this guy over here. And I don't want to bend him back. I'd rather keep him like this. So we might, oh, almost, I might do a little, like a, a little wire just to connect these two. Just to connect them. And, oh, this is one of the problematic golds. So I want to be careful not to bend them back like I just did. <laughs> just did. Yeah, so I'm definitely going to have to add like a little jumper wire to bridge that. So for that, I actually have something. So I have it around here somewhere. Right here. So check out this uh, little 30 a gauge that I found. So I found this like tiny, tiny little 30 gauge jobber here. And 
black and red and of course uh the camera's like yeah i i'm looking at the dragon i ain't looking at no like black and red situation what not even the manual focus of the camera wants to focus on it fine i'll force you <laughs> so yeah this is like a little 30 gauge wire about the size of what we're working with maybe a tiny bit thicker um but the specs should allow us to you know work with it so and and not have it overheat and, and all that kind of stuff so i'm going to go ahead and strip a bit of it and put some like right here and i'm going to switch to the other uh, camera actually let me strip strip this first now the problem is are we going to end up in the same scenario this is something i didn't think about with let me be it'll fit in the tiny little one no not not at all not at all all right so this should be easier though because it's an actual uh, rubberized so we should just be able to theoretically oh I see some metal there we go I got my own crimper right here people yeah bam look how that went I'm going to do a little more wire just because we're working in such a small space I have a little more to hang on to. There we go. So this is, oh, this one's stranded. All right. I did not read the description. I was aiming for some, uh, some solid. All right. Let's get back to our surgical table here. And let me figure out how much of this I need. But first, I'm just kind of uh, untangling it off camera here. All right. So how much of this are we going to need? We need to go from here to like here so not very much at all and I want to keep this rather short all right so same thing <laughs> let's I'm gonna crimp or not crimp but strip rather excessively here since all of this is going to go in one heat shrink tubing even if it's kind of a bigger heat shrink tubing. And then I'm gonna try and uh, cover it with either paint or fake flames. We're gonna fake flame it up. There we go. So let me get the first round done. This one goes here. Gotta think about it, people. Gotta think about it sometimes. I'm gonna try and not have like hands in your face the whole time. Crab walking. We don't have our little helping hands to help us. They're being most unhelpful because I don't think I can get helping hands in there and you guys and my, my not so helpful hands at the time. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can get in here without it coming undone ever so delicately. All right. And Bounty Hunter is saying, um, if you don't or have small wire, I'd suggest using some half watt, zero ohm resistors. If you didn't have your small wire, I'd suggest using some eighth watt, zero ohm resistors. <laughs> well, in fact, Dave did get, did get me some little eighth watt ones. I can't even talk. D -d 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 <laughs> but they're indeed not zero ohms. They are not zero ohm resistors. All right, so which one did I say it needs to connect to? This one right here. So I actually could have uh, stripped this way more. I might actually do that. Strip this guy. This is like the, the in the weeds portion. Doing all the positives. I think once this is... Once we get to like this area, I'm hoping it's it's more 
I don't, I, you know what? I'm not even going to say it because I'm going to jinx the project. So, no. It's all going to be bad, guys. Once the project, like, starts to get the idea that you're a little, you know, you're getting confident, you're feeling good about it, it's like, yep, screw you. Or is it just, uh, are you crab walking in socks or is it too cold for that? Okay, if it's storytelling time and we're sharing, I'm going to share what I'm actually wearing on my feet. It's quite embarrassing. Uh, yes, I am wearing socks, but because it is cold, I did have the heater running right before. Um, it's a little loud, so I try not run it during the stream. Uh, but in this case, uh, it's not too bad. It's not too bad outside. So the the shop is cold, but it's not like freezing. It's not like unbearable. Uh, I am in fact wearing old granny style uh, leopard print slippers. Yes, it was a present, and I'm like, you know, you can't let stuff go to waste. So guess what? I'm uh, wearing it. Um, it's my shop slippers for nighttime streaming. <laughs> Indeed it is. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, solder this guy. But before I do, I actually had another uh, technical idea. So I'm actually going to leave it on this view and you guys are going to see a couple things popping up. So let's see here. Let me uh, add something here. And let's see where is it right here. And let's add here. There we go. And I'm just going to resize this thing because it is like really big. There we go. That way I can chat with you guys. I'm going to put myself kind of like over here. Why don't you like that? <laughs> All right, so I'm enough, I think, out of the way. And, uh, you know, probably it, what, what difference does it make? My head's like cut off anyways. <laughs> All right, so Dev, uh, Dave is saying, or, or Bounty Hunter is saying, Leopard Ninja Slippers. They are indeed, you know, you got a ninja back and forth uh, from the shop. But mostly, um, there's been times where I'm like, oh, let me do something real quick, and, and I'm wearing my socks, and yeah, I've stepped on something. You know, I usually keep it pretty clean in here. Um, I vacuum all the time because the animals come in here. I don't want them stepping on anything. So I'm really good about that. But there must have been one little piece of metal I didn't see, and I stepped on it, and it sucked. So I learned my lesson, you know, even for a quick, like, grab something in here, put something on, anything, you know? So I usually like having, like, an old pair of slippers or something that I don't care if it gets, like, wood on it or, like, wood shavings or solder or anything like that. It doesn't bother me. Uh, let's see. Ooh, that's looking good, guys. I'm going to move this out of the way so you can kind of see what's uh what's going on there and i want to see if i can fix this 1080 issue uh for the next stream because it, it didn't seem uh, easily doable with the menu options so i may have to go into uh, the actual camera options and do it all right so we are positiving or we're, we're getting real positive here you know we got one two three four five then oh it's getting real close to this guy right here but who is the next victim? And I'm going to take around a look. I, I notice I haven't like really looked on this side too much. And that, that could be bad. <laughs> it could be real bad. So let me uh, move him more closer to you guys like that. That might be a better view. And let's see what is going on here. Oh, here's some culprits. All right. And I better get a resistor on this broken one because look, he'd be perfect for fitting all up on here. So let's try again with the whole, and maybe I don't have to sand it too much. I think I'm just gonna sand it until we get some continuity. <laughs> and I'm gonna hold it with this so I don't tug on the LED. Hold it with this. There we go. And Dave tried all kinds of nuclear chemicals on this insulation and none of it worked apparently. Oh, and Dave loved the leopard print. Me too. You know what? I'm kind of a fan. It's, it's a lot of fun to wear, you know, and especially in the shop when you know you have a, a tough project. 
You can't always overtly wear it. You know, I'm, I'm wearing like my skulls and stuff. But the project knows. This project knows that there'll be some leopard print wearing. And you know how it is, you know. Don't make me get my Jersey Shore out. I will. You know, like Snooki who always wore the leopard print. Everything was like leopard print. I'm like, no, you're going to ruin it. But, you know, that person has some sass when they're sporting some leopard print. So, even you guys, leopard print shoes, a leopard print tie. If you're going to do soldering, it's not just for the chicks. Get some leopard print on you and you find that your projects will uh, cooperate just a little bit more. So, I'm going to bust out my continuity here and see if we got enough to be able to wrap a... Um, a resistor. Where, which one was I doing? This one. All right. I'm just going to rub around. And yeah. So I think that's enough. It, it's still kind of gold, but we're definitely getting continuity. And I was taking the insulation off until it was like all bare wire, which is the silver. So it's you know, maybe maybe not all of it has to come out, and maybe that was the mistake. So, let's see. Where'd it go? This one's kind of... Let's see, can I do this and then maybe... I'm trying to cheat and use, like, as much remnant... Yes, I'll do that. This resistor was like jumping ship from the project. It was like, I'm escaping. And it tried hiding underneath the towel. I was like, wait a minute, I saw something jump. So now what I'm doing is wrapping the rest of the resistor over top of the insulated portion uh, just to give it a little more strength. At least that's kind of how it's working out in my head. <laughs> we'll see if that ends up being the deal. All right, and so I'm gonna solder, but bring the solder a little bit up into the insulation as well. And of course it doesn't like super stick to the insulation all that great, but um, enough of it will be kind of on the wire just to solidify the transition from the sanded portion to the unsanded portion. So let's see. There we go. You guys are getting to see some uh, soldering today, some uh, technical stream issues today. Setting stuff up on the fly. Sometimes it's not till you're streaming where you're like, oh man, uh, you, before the stream, I test out, you know, okay, most likely I'm gonna be working in this position or that position. Does the camera catch it? Am I gonna, is the project gonna be off the screen? All that's worked out ahead of time. But sometimes it's not till you're in it where you're like, oh man, I didn't know the project was gonna be this much over here. And it would be great, you know, if I had a camera here. And before, you know, I tried not to do technical, we would just wait till the next stream. But I'm like, no, nah, I'm fixing it now. Why wait till the next stream to give you guys this most amazing view? <laughs> All right. So that feels a lot stronger. So <laughs> makes me a little bit more, more confident. All right, so where are we? This is the trunk. And so we want to keep tying everything to this trunk and elongating it. So I'm going to go ahead and do this type of thing. I'm glad that the camera is not really blowing out, having me so close. Ooh, can I also triple decker? I'm trying to see what it'll look like once it's here. And I'm not really cutting any of the excess off here. I'm just kind of letting it grow and grow. And we, we go tapping and tapping, uh, tap dancing our way onto it. And even this guy can almost start to fit. But let me get this uh, soldered first before I get way too uh, excited tying too many wires onto that thing. And maybe it's time to move you guys just a, a hair again. Right. 
We're rocking the positives. <laughs> the soldering iron is just not, I'm uh, soldering floating a little bit. Normally, like I like to position my elbows or have an anchor. I'm just kind of like free floating a bit. Not the best way to do it, but it's working. It's working. All right, I want to make sure I'm not missing anybody. So we still have this guy is probably next in line. Let me see if anybody else, especially some of these big, big guys right here, the larger LEDs, I want to make sure I get them. But I think we're, we're doing pretty well. There's not very many big ones. You know, there's uh, one, two, three, four, five only. So, because they're just, the leads are difficult to bend and it's just, it's just everything's a bit tougher. All right, let's see if I can get maybe this guy over here. Yeah, he's looking like he's, uh, he's next in line right here. And I'm just gonna... One, see this little, this little guy right here. Let me see where he's coming from. He may need to be next. Yes, indeedy. And I want to make sure that I don't trap in the process any of these uh, negatives, these negatories. So I'm going to take a second here and just move them out of the way. I'm gonna bend them back ever so gently though, because we know how these, uh, how temperamental these things are. But all in all, I have to admit, what a find, you know, with these, uh, with these LEDs, the tiniest baby LEDs. And I think we got it. Here's a couple There we go, as long as it's not in the main trunk. Oh, I'm off screen. I'm off screen. There we go, we got that one. Now we have this one. And since they're all positive, and if they are indeed enveloped, in some kind of, you know, insulation, then we don't have to worry about shorting. All right, so let me throw some solder globules, globulets on what I got going on here. Oh, Dave is bringing up a, a darn Dave. He's trying to be all like, you know, correct about this, which is like, when was the last time I tested all this hot mess? Oh, I think I already soldered there. Oh dear, I probably should have uh, tested. So let's see if we can test before moving on. Uh, make sure our hot mess works. So. The idea here, let me see if I can move him. Actually, I think this view will be better up here. There we go. So let me try and whoop, give you guys more of a overview. All right, so let's test. So this is our positive trunk right here. And we are so far, we're not doing any of these, so I don't have to worry about testing those for now. For now, let me grab a battery just to make sure things light up. And let me start touching a couple negatives. There's one. There's one. He's behind. He's kind of tough to see. And there's that guy. There's one. 
Oh, where are you at? You know what? I might have not wired him yet because there are a couple gold ones still not done. Yeah, there's quite a few gold ones still not done. So we are getting, you know, all the, the ones all the way in the back. The very first one right here, you know, lighting up. So that's pretty good. Yep, that one's nice. Now I wish I could find the one that's like inside his mouth. So that would be great if I had confirmation that that one was working. So let's see here. I don't think I've gotten that one to light up yet. And using alligator clips on these things I found very difficult because they don't clamp down enough. They end up in between the teeth. Oh, we might have a couple hidden negatives. That's going to be the toughest part, I think, is just... Um, oh, here's a hidden negative. Let me start popping out these hidden negatives. Right there. So there could be a couple gems in there that I haven't tried out yet. Right, nothing's lighting up there, but it could be I just haven't. Uh, wow, there it is. That's the one that I wanted to make sure. All right, so that's not wired uh, yet. So it must be hiding up in here, around here somewhere. So, or that one's wired, meaning, but the one that wasn't wired before is the one that's probably hiding up in here. So let me start pulling some of these. We don't have very many more to go. So let me start to pull in some of these jobbers here. So all that is wired. And I'll keep these. I'm trying to now detangle my little reds and blues from the rest of it. So perhaps I'll move them completely out of the way so I can finish. So, okay, so far, so good. We're, we're good. We're good. All right, so here's the rest. I only have one, two, three, four more positives to go. I can't believe I got the... I'm quite impressed. All right, so I'm going to tie these like this real gently just so they don't keep getting in the way because they're gonna be the very last ones that we're gonna to touch on. So I'm gonna put you guys in uh, tabletop view again and see what we can do here. Uh, move him into frame and we got this guy. Oh, we got this guy. Oh, look, he almost didn't make it. He almost did not make the train train almost left the station without him. Look at that. Let's get him done. Now this, the wiring is going to be, you know, a little loose. Um, all said and done, it is, it's running rather flush, a uh, flush, a uh, flash, <laughs> uh, rather flush with the bottom, which is nice, you know, but it is somewhat bulky. Not the bulkiest I've seen, but, uh, you know, bulky. All right. I think this one's next. Okay. 
and one of the reasons I chickened out, I was going to do two to three of same, similar, same kind resistors, uh, <laughs> same kind LEDs per resistor and run two to three, as long as they're the same kind on. Um, after I finished all this glue work, I started to kind of chicken out. Uh, the reason being that um, I was like, man, if I ever, like, I just don't want to redo this glue thing. So if anything in the future should ever happen, I'm like, this is probably the one part of the build that I want as foolproof as possible. The other stuff is rather easy to access if need be, you know, things like that. But I'm thinking, oh, before doing that, do I need to solder anything? I probably need to solder something. Something going on in there doesn't look very solderish. So let's solder that up. So this is the one part where I kind of like chickened out. Um, probably if I had the biggest critique of myself uh, that I work to improve on is sometimes being too textbookish. Like I think sometimes when you know you run all the formulas and all that, it, of course it is it is very good to do that uh, because you don't burn anything out and stuff. But sometimes you learn so much by pushing the limits a little bit and you find some cool ways to do things. So that's probably one quest I always work on for myself is sometimes not be too textbookish, you know, and just go for it. But I'm, I'm going to give myself a pass this time, you know, because I did fail that. Uh, but I'm giving myself the pass with the fact that after I did all this work, I was like, oh man, this is probably not the time to get super brave uh, about this uh, because I would have to unglue all this stuff. And once our little mage is on, it's just gonna be a hot mess. So I decided, you know what, this one time, I am gonna indeed give myself a pass and be like, you know what, let's go back to textbook and do one resistor per LED. I think it's, I think the other way would have worked, you know, honestly would have worked just fine. But if it wouldn't have, I would have been kicking myself or it would have been. But then like three months from now, it, you know, something happened or an LED burned out or something like that. And it might have not even been for that reason, because we're doubling up, you know, on a resistor. It could have been for like a wire breakage or something like that. Like one of the cats decided to play with the flame and, uh, had nothing to do with the resistor but I would have blamed the resistor would have been like oh should have been more textbook about it so yes I know we all have stuff we we work on so I don't know if you guys have like shop related stuff that you're like you know what I gotta like be better at this or try be more open to this that or the other um but that's definitely I had such a view, good view of this what happened there we go Drag, drag it. There we are. Uh, dragging him around. Um, so that's one of the things that I'm like, yeah, definitely on my to do to work on is just don't be so textbook all the time. You know, I think it stifles growth sometimes. <laughs> but just one time I'm giving myself a pass. Yeah, I'm giving myself a pass. All right. So I think we don't have much more and we can run another test. That is a resistor train if I've ever seen one. Who wants to get on board the resistor train? I'll do that and move you guys. Kind of like that. There we go. I'm like simultaneously making it easier for me to work and you guys to see. So I think I'm going to like crab walk and kind of look and see if I have any positives going on. Any loose positives that are trying to be like, Tee -hee -hee, don't notice me. Don't notice me until it's too late. Oh, I will tap you in somehow. Let's not even play around. So theoretically, all the positives should be uh, wired up so we can account for all of the LEDs now and I think I have all the little negative leads here so starting with uh, the one in his mouth there or you know we can just start from up here 
So, yep. Oh, let me put you guys in a different view. There we go. And move him into view. So I'm going to start, well, attempt to start here and work my, my, my way back to his mouth. All right. So, yes, that's the mage. That's some uh, blue action right there. There should be, this one should be blue as well. Yep. And these two are of the other kind. So, all right. Which is this one? Oh, looking closely at this leg, it looks like this is another lead that broke off. We're going to have to sand this one. We're going to come back to it. Looks like we're going to have to sand that one. Darn. Yeah, that's the one we have to sand. This one and this one. Oh, there are some hidden. There's a little red one there. There's some hidden leads. There we go. That one. All right, that one's good. The one's closest deep in its mouth that we want to make sure we get. There's one more I'm not quite sure I have yet. Now I do. All right. So I think I think we got them all. And now we're going to do the exact same thing with the negatories. So let's uh, start looking for those. And I'm going to put you guys in tabletop view again. There we go. So, just getting the view here. Sometimes it's easier to see it on my computer than this little tiny monitor uh, in front of me. So, let's get in here. We're going to work with these two right there. Uh, so, let's do them first. And I'm going to go in and make sure there's nothing like before them. No, there isn't. So, I'm going to try and wrap... Actually, now that this is done, I have no idea how I'm going to get a uh, piece of, uh, you know, a piece of, uh, whatchamacallit, ah, insulation. So the problem is that it just trunks and is attached to this. There's no way in my head I was thinking I was going to put a big, long piece of insulation on it. But that doesn't look like it's going to work that way. But luckily, I don't think there's going to be any type of bridging because all of these are insulated, you know. So unless like an insulated uh, portion and what we'll do is on the negative ones, we will use heat shrink then. That way all the negative, one, negative ones are heat shrunk and it's okay if the positive ones are not uh, because, you know, they're, they're not going to touch that way anyways. All right. So... A bit of an afterthought there. It's like, hmm, probably should have, but so I know I have some wires, some positive wires, so I'm going to bend this one a little bit away. And let me give you, get you guys back into view right here. These are the two that I'm working with, this and this. You can see them poking my finger, so... Uh, worked out so amazingly awesome in my head <laughs> in my head all right so to make sure I don't have any shorts there let's see if I can get 
these two to light up. All right, both of them are lighting up and flickering. So there is no short and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you know make it so by putting some insulation. But first we are going to Oh, Dave's the opposite. He's like, I'm working on being more textbook. I'm way too brave. Yeah, I've always been way too textbook. It's like a life thing since I was little. You know, very, very textbook. And um, I can say it's probably stifled some creativity. So I definitely want to get a little more, like, brave. I think that just the making of the dragon was a little less textbook, you know, doing a complex shape with its wings like this, normally not recommended. Uh, but I was like, they don't know what they're talking about. I can do this, you know, throw the book, you know, to the wall. And I've got this, I've got this. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start uh, making the negatives here way obvious way 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 obvious for us just so i don't miss oh here's one back here oh you naughty you trying to be getting up on all my nerves all right here oh look at how many all right so we got this guy and he's gonna come up on here. So I'm going to solder this guy on and then I'm going to heat shrink because I don't think I have anything until this guy right here. Let me turn this guy like that. So this is my trunk here. And the next guy is this guy right here. I'll put my finger so you see him right there. So I'm gonna heat shrink what we got, but first I gotta, I gotta solder up what we got. Oh, well, somebody's happy. Hopefully I got some cool stuff being delivered. I thought about wiring up a harness ahead of time, you know, just wiring up a harness and then kind of covering it with the harness. But then I didn't really exactly know the placement of what I was going to do. So that, that was uh, that was an idea that I had. It was a fleeting one, very fleeting. All right, I'm gonna just get down low. How low can you go? I'm going to be limboing it. And I wanna make sure I don't squish my flames. And I'm just yanking certain wires just to be sure that they are indeed soldered. All right, so I need to somehow get to this guy right there. There we go. A little bit easier for you guys to see. A little bit tougher for me. So I'm going to bend this and kind of do a rough measurement. Just going to do a little wind to keep him in place. And I'm going to take a piece of, let's see, how fat do I think I need that thing to be? Hmm. Will something like this fit? I think so. So I'm going to do a, a little measurement here, at least to minimize, I'll grab my scissor. I'm about right here. Now the trick is going to be doing this without melting my little uh, flames here. 
So I don't think it has to be shrunken all the way, as long as it kind of mostly, you know, is there. So what I'm going to do, I think, is... <laughs> we'll see if that works all right i'm going to plug in the heat gun and hopefully i won't kick the power off you know what i'm going to turn the soldering iron just in case but the batteries the computer is on a different circuit and the cameras would go on battery mode anyways so i tried to plan ahead for these types of things and I think I'm going to use my hand as a shield and this is going to be just brief because I made that mistake as well uh, where I kept the heat gun a little too close to the hot glue, and it doesn't take much for it to just start dis distorting all of your nice shape. So, as you can see, uh, well, as you will see in the next view here, once I kind of return you guys to this view, that we got, you know, more shrink here, but not very much shrink up here, and that's okay. I mean, it's it's gonna, you know, it's just there to block. So, oh, before we do that, before we do that, let's get rid of some of this ugly black. And I'm using my old clumpy paint because it goes on nice and thick. It'll help hide the situation that we got going on here. And I want to go down and get the bottom of it. Not the neatest wiring job, but you know, I think as neat as we can get it for our circumstance. And I'm not making a store-bought lamp anyways. So I kind of like some of the maker imperfections. Like I love seeing the internal wirings and workings of things. So it's kind of neat that it's visible. And we're going to try and hide it a little bit by adding, uh, you know, more, we're going to add more glue flames anyways uh, on top of this wiring uh, to help hide it. And hopefully that glue penetrating within the wires will help uh, mediate any type of, uh, you know, shorting situation that we may get. So I'm going to let that dry just a second here while we run some tests. So I got my trunk, my positive trunk here out of view. And let's see what we get lighting up. All right, is that a big fat nothing lighting up? Oh, it would help if I don't touch it, you know, where the insulation is and I touch it. <laughs> All right, I'm only getting one going off and I know we tied a whole bunch of them on. Hmm. Let me touch around here. So that one's supposed to be going off. But notice when I touch this trunk right here, it does not. Oops. Yeah, it does not. So we're going to have to undo the situation that I just did because there's something going on here. Um, you know what? Let me try wiggling it around, see if it's a short. Oh, it is. Look at that. Now it's on. Now it's off. So either it's a short or there's a broken wire somewhere. But yeah, I'm thinking it's probably a short. 
All right, so I think also what I'm going to do, yeah, now they're all on. Yep, something's touching or something. Um, I don't think it's a broken wire because uh, then both of them wouldn't have come on at the same time. I highly doubt we have two broken wires. So instead, it's probably some kind of short going on, and I'm going to try and duck down and see if I can see where that is and if there's, oh, where that is and if there's an easy remediation without having to remove this. Let's try that. And then what I can do is add some paint and hopefully that'll be enough. Uh, oh, wrong one. Yeah, so that wasn't enough. So let's Let's get some very small insulation on all the wires before bringing them together and then bring them together in a safer spot. And all I'm doing is removing this insulation. Well, thankfully I didn't heat shrink it too much, making it way easier to remove. And let's see what we got going on here. So. I'm just moving some wires around and where's my battery? Where'd it go? Oh, it's in my face. The in the face battery. Okay, so we have the one working like flawlessly. That one works flawlessly, the one back there. But. What is this? Had I not? Oh, I'm an idiot. All right. Yep. I had a moment. I had a moment. <laughs> Did you guys see that I clearly this has got insulation? I took the insulated part and wrapped it the heck around the joint and figured I don't know what I was figuring. Yeah, I completely forgot. It's because these things are silver and it totally like I forget. All right, so let's see what we got lighting up now. Of course, that would not light up in that instance. So, yeah. And, all right. So let's try and not be an idiot. And uh, let me get these two. I'll get these two uh, settled with our little heat shrink tubing and I'll leave enough. Well, thank goodness I didn't have to undo that entire joint. So this is the babiest piece of heat insulation or no touchies insulation. And let me grab the heat gun again and I'm going to move this guy out of the way. This is the idiot wire. This now fondly called. All right, here we go again. Ah, uh, yes, good idea. I used to not use my soldering iron to um, heat the heat shrink tubing because my soldering iron just didn't even get hot enough for that anymore. So yep, yeah, I'm firing back up the soldering iron and using the sleeve of the soldering iron to heat up the tubing. So I'm just gonna let this heat up a little bit and I'm gonna put this back on. And I'm gonna use this knife, Oop. this knife to hold it back in place. Good one, um, bounty hunter. Look at me getting to see, that's what happens when you get textbook. Like, step two, bust out a uh, heat shrink, or you know, heat gun. Shrink tubing, step three. That's what I get. I'm just going to touchy touch. Very light touchy touchies. 
just enough to kind of keep it in place. All right. Let me re-aim that fan. There we go. I think it's just uh, heat shrink tubing just stinks more. All right. So let's, uh, before I paint and then do all this artistry, let's test one more time that we indeed have two LEDs working. And we do. Perfect. All right. So now let me paint that guy real quick again. can't believe I wrapped insulation, the insulated part of the wire, like, hey guys, I don't get why this is not working. Lame. All right. All right, that's my one for the stream. No more idiot mistakes. <laughs> Let's see here. Put my paintbrush here. And uh, Dave, um, Dave is saying, oh yes, ah to the uh, Bic lighter and uh, soldering sleeve. Yeah, should have been doing that from the first place. And then Dave is saying, does solder melt the covering? I can't believe I did not test that. Arg. Yeah, so, oh, that's a good, we'll not do it on any of these LEDs, but I think I have a couple spare kind of broken ones that, you know, that I tested myself a, a couple things like different grids of sandpaper and things. Um, and uh, Bounty Hunter is saying someone's got a case of the Monday. Oh, do I have a case of the Mondays or what going on right now? I can't keep anything straight going on here. Even the most basic stuff when you're trying to like solder insulation, things aren't going too well for you. <laughs> and it must be the it must be my brain is frozen. <laughs> totally frozen. But I got warm feet. Clearly, that doesn't help with the project. You need the you need the northern end, not like the southern end of your body working. All right. So let me see what other uh, negatories I have. So this is kind of like our trunk that we're tapping into. And uh, let's see, so I got this guy, which I tried. Now, normally, under normal circumstances, what I would do is cut this and uh, remove the insulation and tap right there, right? That's the easiest thing to do. But oh, hell no, I am not doing that. I'm going to keep it and wait till we can tap. And it's pre-ordained, like pre, uh, you know, uh, uninsulated portion. Yes. So yes, normally I would neatly tap everything as we go. But mm -mm, I rather in this case almost run a jumper wire like we did at this point right here the little red jumper which oh i should have painted but he's so tiny he's barely visible it's the big ugly black um you know insulation um i forgot to look into white uh, insulation see if they just have white that we can use all right so what is the closest one this one right here this one is another one of those big old led leads so let's see if I can bend this guy over here and maybe he can bend back. Oh no, I need a, I'll, I'll probably need a tiny jumper just to kind of keep things bending in this direction, not in that direction. So let me prep a jumper. Something like this. I'll cut it a little long. and switch up views for a while there we go and here we go it's like where'd my craft knife go yeah i'm wondering if the soldering gun would soldering gun soldering iron would melt the insulation we're gonna try that here in a sec as soon as i finish this uh jumper. I'm just way too curious.
All right, I think I'm gonna give myself a little more just because we're we're working in a, a rough environment. All right, so I got my little braids on either end and let's go back in people. We're going back in. All right, so I'm gonna move some stuff cause I gotta like hug you guys now. I'm like hugging you. <laughs> um, I'm gonna just bend this a little so I can see what I'm doing. Back there. Get that, oh no, get that on there. It's a little hangy hang, but I think we can do it. It's like hanging by a thread. Probably not the best way to solder, but we'll do it, we'll do it. No, don't fall. All right. I'm gonna let that dry just a little bit and it'd be nice there's no real place where it can really bridge too much over here but I'm gonna toss a little coat of paint on that guy we're painting on our insulation <laughs> so I don't have to put another like mini insulation on it just kind of to help shield it and this is why I keep very old, super, super globby paint. Oh, did I just use red and we're on the negative? Yes, I did. Oh my gosh, it's Monday. It's Monday. Guys, no wonder. Let me paint this white so I don't confuse myself. Because you know it's coming. Winter is coming. Let me do that. What an idiot. Ryan, idiot. <laughs> All right, so Dave Beck is saying I'm a hugger. He's okay with the hugging. All right, good, good, good. We're in a small shop. You can't help it. All right, guys, I, I'm, I got the black prep so I don't make that mistake again. So we're going to do this. And I'm going to make sure there's no other. And I'm going to make sure he's not touching anything that he should not be touching. This naked uh, lead here. And he is not. Wonderful. I think it helped that I pre-insulated the resistors. The positive leads with the resistors already are pre-insulated. So I think what I'm going to do is chop off more insulation from this guy right here. And we're going to take a little bit at a time. There we go. I'm using my fingers as wire strippers. All right, I'm gonna hug you guys again to kind of get in here. Let's see where I am. And I'd like to bend him forward. Am I gonna hit anybody? No, I'm not. Beautiful. Beautiful. but I need to be able to solder him. So I'm bending him back. I'm bending him back. Abort. Moving some of these little pliers out of the way. And I'm going to de-insulate a little bit more. See if I can uh, get 
get this soldered and we'll do a test it's getting to be about that time also going to paint up that black lead, not the black lead, but the negative lead coming out of the LED because he is completely naked. Uh, he's not really touching anything, but just in case by the time we start to get things kind of situated and bent around, he may touch something. So just painting this kind of leading edge here. without getting the, the little flames. We don't want them to be white. We want them to conduct our beautiful light. There we go. All right. So let's continue tapity tapiru, knowing that one of these we're going to have to cut and sand, just like I think it's this guy right here it looks awfully suspicious so this is done I'm gonna go ahead and bend him where he needs to go and we're probably if if I don't want to mess around with cutting and sanding these guys uh, we're gonna need a nice jumper now and who's gonna get jumped first looks like these two I'm gonna put these two aside and let me see if there's any large LEDs that still need doing, that still need a little help. I think we got them, but let's do a quick test. Positive and negatory. bunch of nothing it is lighting up I'm pretty sure I soldered this, so we should be good. Nothing, not even a little, little teaser for me. So that one's coming on. This one looks like it might be broken too. Some of these uh, negatives. Right, so let's troubleshoot that. Well, I don't see the problem. I believe there's a short right here. Let me see if I can move that wire right where the insulation decides to not to end all right let's see if that's enough yep but we should have Throw some paint on where I see it's getting a tad bit close. Okay. 
There we go. Hopefully that layer of paint will be enough, but I moved the wire out of the way. Uh, Dave is saying, um, see if you have a short with your meter from negative to positive. Let's see. So I think I fixed the short, um, but we can also double check with the meter as well as the battery. All right, now we're still getting a short because one of the things I noticed as well, once I did move the, you know, our short situation, still not all the LEDs are lighting up. So you can see that we have one, two, three LEDs lighting up and probably better to view from this, uh, you know, from the overhead view right here. And let's see if I can back you guys on up just a tiny bit. So we're gonna see that we have three LEDs, one red and two. But at this point, we should have um, more LEDs because we've wired up more than just the three. No, 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 I don't think so. I don't think so. I, oh. If I also flip the battery such that it is correct, that'd be great. Yeah, so we have three lighting up because we have not wired any of the little guys yet. So that makes sense. We do have three, I believe, uh, done here. That's one, two, and three from here. So that makes sense. Right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm just like double checking in my head before we move on that we did only, I should have counted how many LEDs I put on this thing, you know, but I do know how many big ones I put on. And we have only wired big LEDs so far uh, because the leads for the little guys are way too long. They're still like, we're going to, we're about to jump to them now. So I've got these three. Um, so yes, only three, and I'm going to dab a little more paint on the area where I think might be an issue later on. Well, at least we know that's the first place to check because I'm not going to be able to get, I'd have to start cutting things to start to get insulation on there. So I'm going to add a little paint. Which the big LEDs are probably the most difficult because uh, their LEDs are, their leads are completely bare. Coming right out of the LED, their leads are bare. One of the advantages with the little LEDs is they're completely insulated. So it's not till you get to the end of that wire that you can have some kind of short situation. So they can run alongside each other. They can get all crisscross. It doesn't matter. But with the big LEDs, I have to pay attention where I'm running those leads when I'm connecting them or, or else we're gonna get another, uh, another short. So now I'm gonna switch cameras on you guys again and we're gonna to start to jump uh, because I'm still a little too chicken to cut this wire here and meet it up right here where it needs to meet up. I'm, I, I'm really thinking about doing it, but I'm, I'm chicken. I'm chicken, yep, no, no. Bucka, bucka. <laughs> I, I am chickening away from that. So. Let me cut some uh, insulation off right here. And Chicken Rachel strikes again. See, I try, I'm trying to go textbook, all like neat wiring where you go tapping in so that way the wire never gets too thick. Nope. This is the one time where I, oh, I completely butchered that, so let's just start over. This is the one time that I'm not going to be textbook. We're going to have some big, long, ugly wires running, but that's okay. I'm okay with it this time because they break. The less that you bend those little wires in like a 90 degree or sharp bend, the better. Also, the long leads that I'm doing here are probably not a good idea, but they're easier to wrap in this tiny, like, you know, you need the hands of a four-year-old type of situation. So, if 
I wrap wrap a roo. I'm gonna try and get him nice and and I'm gonna use my thumb to hold him in place. Oh, that didn't work. And wrap him around. Like it does. Thusly. I think I'm gonna solder that in place real quick. I got that pretty good. I'm not gonna like, you know, mess around. Dave is already sending me dinner with the chicken drumstick. Chicken drumstick will power me through. All right, now for this, I will put a tiny, tiny bit of uh, insulation only because now we're getting into some nakedness. There's a naked area right here where it's just one and a get all like, hey, first date, let's meet up. All right, I'm just pulling up. Oh, look at you, sneaky. Oh, I might have not had to jump too much. Oh, where'd you hide? Well, here's another one hiding. Oh, and here is another one. All right, we're gonna have to get creative here. Uh, I'm gonna put that, that one over there. And oh, there's two of them here, that's rough. So I'm gonna put my finger where there's two that we have to connect right there so let's connect them two first and look at this guy right here look at this little baby one all right all right i got it i got it sure let me get what the rock is cooking here and this will be my opportunity to put wait a minute does that have a does that have a resistor on it? No, thank goodness. I thought I missed one. And all I'm trying to do here, as I fail miserably, is just move the little glue things out of the way. There we go. Just gonna twist, twist the roux. And you guys can't see like anything. I get that. <laughs> and before anything, I'm going to go ahead and solder. And because now we're getting to kind of the land of bare wire, I'm going to put a little bit of a uh, insulation on that before it starts tapping into this hot mess right here. So we have quite a few to tap into. And then this is where, where we're going to start seeing. And I'm going to take a deep look here and start pulling at some wires to see if there's any little um, negative ones that are buried that I forgot. But, no, alas, no. I'm going to go ahead and solder those two together. And, oh, I'm not going to get in there. I have to hug you guys, I think. I may have to redo some of these uh, fires. Put in a couple fake flames because they're going to get a little droopy with this heat. There we go. Now let me prepare. Let's see if I can find a little skinny. Just a little bit. it there and let me see where it's gonna go next so somehow this has to get and probably tap into here mm. Mm. no yes it can or is it touching anything it will Tap tap a roo here. Yeah, that's safer. 
Yeah, that's safer. All right. I'm going to cut this. I'm going to prep it, and I'm going to put a little bit of a heat shrink situation on that other wire, so that way we don't get any... Uh, any relations that are unapproved <laughs> right here Objective is at least to close up this bottom end right here. Oh, it's kept moving. I'm getting some droopy flame. What? Oh, I'm going to hug you guys again. That seems to be the best, best mode of work. All right. That'll stay in place enough. Although, let me just uh, go over here and do a quick test. There we go. And a little bit of paint paint a -roo. God, I'm thinking like the negative seems to be taking way longer than the positive. I thought the positive, I tackled that one first because I'm like, oh, that is going to be the bear with all those resistors and all that hot messages. But I'm thinking... I think it's also because the positive is done. So now we have to start worrying about, um, as Dave is calling it, cross-pollination. We'd be a little more concerned about that now. Since we already had our first episode. Now this sleeve is not 100% tight on there, but as long as there's a barrier. And if I get too much heat on there, I already see that the little flames start to... Woo, get a little bit droopy a little less feisty a little less uh menacing Yeah, if I just removed a little bit more insulation on this side right here, I might be able to sneak them in here. <laughs> right in there. And a little naked, naked wire in there. There we go. Doing it again with the webcam is the focus isn't the, the greatest. So I have glue all up in my joint. I do. That's not going to help. Cleared off. All right, let's see how I'm going to sneak in there. This one's going to be rough. That's going to be rough. Little globby. That can work with it. All right. 
And let's see what we got. All right, we got another one. We have four working now. So, so far, so good. Now, let's see. This guy here looks a bit difficult, but he's going to have to... He's going to have to tap in. So it looks like I'm really going to have to just remove all the insulation. And what I'm going to do is in this upper part, put kind of a fat, um, a fat piece of insulation and leave this little tail for the rest of them to tap into. Will that work? about that much. Prepare my soldering, which is my heat shrink tubing shrinker device. Might be a little bit too, too long. This is the gauntlet right here. Like, once we get through this part right there, it shouldn't be so, so bad. Because the blues are predominantly the blinking, and the blinking are these red and uh, blue ones, which is great. They're not as uh, terrible. As the large LEDs are the worst, because their leads are big, bulky, uninsulated, difficult to bend, you know, not like the, the little gold and silver. So I'm going to use a knife, a knife, to hold this in place while I insulate. Oh, I try not to use the, uh-oh, oh, there it is. All right, I was going to say I try not to use the actual tip portion of the soldering iron to you know shrink everything but my space is quite tight I may actually end up painting this because this is being a, a pain in the bones all right let me see if I can hold this in place and nearly just shrink up here Ooh. I just think it really come on Shrinking off. Yep, there we go. He's really shrunken off. And normally I like to heat shrink nice and tight against the wire, but right now, for this, I'm not being super picky. Because it's more just to prevent touching, not so much to prevent like environmental elements and all that kind of stuff. So um, now we have a nice little little lead here that we can continue working on. There we go. So who needs to come over here? Probably this guy is the shortest. Now let's make sure it's very difficult to tell if the end is insulated or if the insulation broke off. So instead, let's just see. All right, so we're getting that to light up. So indeed, the end is, I could have uh, stuck him in the, in the little insulation, the black tubing, but oh well. All right, I'm gonna solder him in place. Nice. Each time we go, we're getting one more and one more to turn on. So who's the next shortest? This guy right here. And again, let me just make sure that the end is indeed 
devoid of insulation. And it is. And I'm going to start wrapping by the insulated part. Just to try and make all these things a little bit stronger. All right, let me solder, solder. start down here where it's not insulated. Okay, I brought the solder all the way up onto that insulation. <laughs> you are not breaking on me. All right, so then the next longest one looks like this one, but this one looks suspect, like it's missing. In no, I think it was this one that's missing insulation, but we're going to double check that fact. Well, let's double check these guys. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, the number is growing. All right. Oh, yes. I said I was going to check this guy here. Yep. All right. So we've got insulation. And I'm going to do the same thing. Start wrapping this guy around with his insulation and all. We're layering on the solder, but I think I prefer to do this one by one and check scenario. Nice. The more I do, the more we are getting lit. What did I say? Six the last time? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yay! All right, guys. So it looks like we only have three more. Please. Please don't let there be any little hidden dudes up in here. All right. So it looks like we may have to do another jumper to jump from this end on this finger to this pre, you know, insulated. You know, normally I'd cut and, oh, maybe not. Maybe I can just go like this. And if I wrap enough... <laughs> wrap it enough times the uninsulated part will get there mm. yeah I don't think so it didn't work too well plus it's getting a little bulky so I think maybe I'll do a little jumper just to kind of give us a, a fresh start so move this guy out of the way Unkink uh, him a little bit, but not too much. And I'm going to tuck this guy now like this. And see what kind of, we need a baby jumper. One baby jumper coming up. And I'm going to take the opportunity to get this guy all insulated as well and painted. <laughs> All right. So I think what I'm going to do is remove the coating. Oh wow, I, I really have not been having to uh, even use like a knife or anything. You can just do it with your fingers. Go. I only left a tiny little black in the middle just to kind of hold it together. And I'm going to get this on one end, then we're going to insulate, and then we're going to continue. All right. I'll bring you guys into view here in a second. I'm like, well, once you get started. Let me bring you guys into view. And the excitement continues. Not at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, Egon says, don't cross the streams. Oh, heck no. I'm like trying to be way more careful now as we're progressing down the project not to cross the streams. 
there we go. And we'll give that a test before we move on. And I'll go ahead and get everything um, shrunk and painted, and then we'll move on. It would help if I don't reverse my positives and negatives. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nice. All right. So let's get a little heat shrinkery going on. And I'm going to use this. Oh, you curse, curse you braids. And they get so tiny and I knew, you know, we were going to kind of be dealing with really tough little tiny situations I was like oh maybe I can get like a solid core I did not pay attention to the listing and this one's a bit it's a bit braided help our no touchy situation. All right, let's get this thing painted up. And inking. My poor brush, it's like, I'm getting dry over here. Forgot your water. That's okay. It's time for a new paint brush set anyways. It's getting to be that time. You, oh, oh, did I get paint on you guys? I sure did. But luckily, not on the lens. I'm cleaning you guys off, so pardon the wigglage. We don't have to be perfect with our white. It's just to kind of knock out the majority of the black hair that's visible. And here, it's the little leads from the larger LEDs that are tough to find in this mess. So I'm hoping that I nail all of them and I don't leave anybody behind. That's wide enough for me. So now, let's see where we can tap this thing or who wants to tap into it. Now, if I recall, which ones do we, do we have any of the blues going yet? No, we have two regular size blue LEDs. So I'm gonna look for their leads. They have to be buried somewhere here. Oh, here they are. So once we get to here and here, all right, so we still have a ways to go before we get to these two right here. This guy there and this guy there in blurry vision, these two. So don't let me forget them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, they're just asking for it. They're like, please forget us. Oh, they're at a perfect tapping point too. Who's next to tap? Oh, this too. Yes. You know what? Let me tap this problematic guy right here first. And to be sure, let me confirm, he's not the one with the weird uh, insulation problem that we're gonna have to fix. No, so he lights up. So he can already get tapped into here. Oh, 
All right, let's get that soldered up. This is looking way better than the beginning when it was all scraggly wires everywhere. I was like, I have no idea how we're gonna keep this straight. But we're doing it, people. You know, maybe not the best way, but you know, a way. <laughs> one of the ways. So, let's see here. Sometimes I find you have to let the solder calm down, you know, calm down. Let the solder kind of do its thing before you try again. All right. Now. Oh, no. No, don't start with this with me again. Are we getting touchies? Well, we can't with the little LEDs because they're insulated, so they shouldn't be really touching anywhere. No! Dead! All right, let me start peeking around. All right, these should be okay because they're insulated. Let me wiggle them around a little bit. Nope, it is like, nope, don't want to work with you. All right. And we made so good insulation, so good. All right, that's allowed to touch because they're of the same variety. Let me uh, look at my situation back here again. And I'm going to turn him where I can see him and see if we got touchy. Positives touching, that is good. Now, the only place it might be touching is here. Let's see if that's if that was it. It might have not been. I think it's positive and positive, so I don't think it might have even mattered. It did. That's what, okay. So it's the same problem spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So I need to remember that that's the problem. And as I move, the wire shifts its way back. So. Um, I'll just have to remember that this wire has to run over top of the resistor because there's no, I don't know that I can, you know what, let me put a dab of glue there to hold that in place. So let me fire up the glue gun just to kind of like, it's like when the parents are like, you're not allowed to go out with that person. Well, that's when they're going to go out with that person. They're going to be like, mm -hmm, we're going to meet in secret where we can like go out and like watch movies or do whatever you know just be all rebellious so i see where you are i see what you are so let's just uh before we move on i'm gonna let this uh, power up a little bit and take a seat i've been in hunch mode uh crabbing you know <laughs> just to make myself a little more nimble to go around the you know our situation here so some of the flames have gotten a little wheel turd you know with the heat but i think when we place in our hair plugs you know our hair plug flames i think we'll be fine i'm not too worried um they're easy enough to also cut the the pieces that are kind of like wiltering and using our you know our, our cd case technology here see how many like little plugs i've already created you create one to replace it and then just dab a hot glue and put that little flame back 
so we can replace the wilted ones. So um, Dave Beck or uh, Bounty Hunter is saying, has anyone else hopped onto the uh, World of Daily Game Train? W wordy w Wordle Daily Game Train. Um, and Dave Beck was also saying, I was just thinking of hot glue. So Wordle Daily Game Train. I don't know what that is. Wordle Daily Game Train. <laughs> Please explain yourself, because I would love to know what that is. Because that sounds like fun. I, I probably would want to hop on this uh, Wordle train. Because right now I'm on the Monday train. As in, like, uh, soldering insulation together, wrapping around two pieces of insulation like this, you know. And then wondering why the connection doesn't work, you know. And, and spending an hour troubleshooting something really stupid. <laughs> but... We're getting there, people. We're getting there. Uh, yes, for, for the insulation. So, are we there yet? Are we there yet? No, it's, uh, it's, it'll get there. I'm going to turn the temperature up just a little bit. So as soon as the glue gun is ready to go, I'm going to dab that because we're going to start to shift and move as we move our way. Also, as we move our way kind of like towards this section right here and I'm like totally pointing and you guys are like I don't know what the heck she pointing at you know what the heck she pointing at so <laughs> coming to you let's see if I can get it to focus definitely has a, a distance that it likes to focus on the most I tried my jazz hands technique oh there we go so it's about there so we're going to get into this area where there's a lot of resistors and a lot of bare wire. So this is where we're going to have to start to kind of like be careful. And what I may do is we, ha you know what, I think while the glue heats, I'm going to uh, go ahead and insulate all that. And I'll give you guys a better view of what I'm talking about. Oh, uh, Bounty Hunter saying, the Wordle is a daily game of word guessing. Each day is a new five-letter word that you have six guesses to get the correct answer. Um, I'll drop a link in Discord. Oh, great. Oh, my gosh. I never knew that even existed. That's awesome. All right. So one of the things that I'm noticing, and I'll move this into view, is this resistor train right here, it's actually floating on its own. I could get like a big old insulation on and that's going to solve a lot of our problems so I think I'm going to go ahead and do that while the glue gun is uh, doing its thing so oh the dragon has lo lost yet another horn but that's okay I have been gluing uh, little horns back together again if they snap off and I have way too many extra so I'm not too worried about that all right so I'm going to go ahead and get this, get a nice piece of insulation, but I'm going to leave this little uh, bare area here bare uh, so we can continue tapping into it. So I'm going to test out a couple different sizes and see, I, I, I'm going to try and see how small can I go. Mm, I wish I could use that size, but I think, I don't think that is I'm hoping not to have to go to like party straw size, you know, like cocktail margarita party straw size. Then we know we're having a good Wednesday night. <laughs> party time. Excellent. Oh, this one might be good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let me figure out. We'll go to about here. All right. Oh, and the glue is ready to go. But let's get this uh, heat shrink tubing up on here. As long as this end is pretty well done, I'm not going to worry too much about the other end. It's kind of tough to get to. Oh, 
All right. Yes, I'm having a word word brain farts today tonight because I'm in high concentration mode. All right, let's see if I can find that area again where we were having issues, which. So my wire is indeed, let's do a double check that everything is uh, working and non-shorted out before proceeding. Yep. All right. So you know we got some good separation. And oh, I'm not going to hold this above the dragon until I see where I need to go. Right there. All right. And I'm going to leave the heat gun just in case we kind of need it. And I'm going to take this guy's little horn where he broke and I'm going to put it on my desk here so I can glue it back together again. A little super glue action on some of the nails there. You can see um, the wing. You can see a little bit of the, um, you know, the, the foil. Uh, again, um, not the best position that I sculpted here, but it was so cool. I could not resist. We had to do it. He looked all menacing, like his wings were like, you know, flapping. All right, just keeping an eye on the two blue tiny leads that I can't forget about. All right, so we are good to go. Um, while I have that black one exposed, I might as well give it a little, a little paint paint-a-roo. Paint paint-a-roo. While it dries, we can continue on. Yeah, so the paint wasn't the greatest insulator. And I think it's because it really needs to dry before it uh, can insulate. And I probably need a couple coats, which I only threw like a quick coat before we moved on. So hence why we're getting the repeated uh, shorting problems. So hot glue should do the trick. Much thicker. Get the little bottom of this, let me just do its thing, and there we go. All right, so stream is still going, which is awesome. Yes, it is. All right, cool. All right, so we don't have very many more. We have one, two, three, four. Uh, oh, five, six for the negative here. So, so we got four of these little guys here. And let me see now, who do we want to tap? This one, I think, had the problem. So, so we definitely have to get this guy up in here as well. And he will probably need some kind of insulation. And I'll switch you guys' views here in a moment. Yeah, so let's do him first. So let me move all the glue little glue things out of the way. Come on back. And here we go. I'm going to try and marry this little lead here to this bare area. So I'm going to get my bent up and forward. easiest for me to bend this guy.
all around. And let's get that soldered up. Name of the day. Just getting things a bit less uh, clumsified on the table. Whoa! All right, where am I soldering? This lead's getting a little small. I might have to put a jumper on here. A stretcher. A little wire stretcher. All right, I'm going to let that go for a bit. And then we're going to do a test. And then I'm going to put a wire stretcher on here. That's the technical term. All right, please no shorts. Even the dogs agree. They're like, please stop shorting. All right, it's looking nice. two into view as well and find the one that has the issue be it you no be it you no no ah probably this guy right here let's go to this guy right here okay we're not going to get to him for for a little bit so I think the next one is this one. And let's get a bit of a jumper situation because I got a little nubbin, a little nubbin to tie into. And we're gonna need a, probably an insulation because you can see a wire like right there where it's wanting a touch. Let me actually bring this closer to me, which will cause, you guys could probably see a little bit better. There we go. So, how long do we need this jumper for? Who's first? These two are about the same size. I mean, we can almost tie these two guys together and then tie them onto the jumper. Yes. And I'm going to start tying them at the insulation. The little ends together. So we come to a point. Ah, mostly. There we go. So I want to make sure I got enough wire and it's not all insulation. Yes, I do. All right, so now let's stretch out this nubbin. I mean, it can almost. We should stretch it out. It's getting a little bit too difficult to, to work with. Oh, I'm stretching this one out. Oh, this one is like real... Right, this one I've uh, kind of made it difficult for myself. Yep, that one's definitely going to need some kind of sleeve on it because it is just wanting to get feisty with the positive wires running up above. And there is a naked part of the wire. All right, now, where are we gonna trim you? I think I'm gonna keep this rather long. And 
and trim off maybe all the insulation so we can just go tapping tap tap a roo and then put like a large thing over it like that And I'm just pinching the insulation with my nails and pulling it apart. If only the little LED variety was, was easy to do. Just like that. There we go. And then we'll insulate necessary all right and then anybody else anybody else all right oh I can't forget this guy right here hmm trying to come up with my insulation strategy here Yeah, because he's going to tap right into those. So I think I'm going to insulate him all the way down here. Even if he just kind of touches a little bit. Yeah. Let's do that. And what happened? try that oh unless I bend this guy all the way back yeah and away from trouble I think that's what I'm gonna do he'll be the last he'll be the one one of the last two do I only have these two left really really I'm going to go ahead and sand this guy, get him prepped, because I know I'll forget. And I'm going to do like before, I'm going to hold this like that so I don't overexert. And I'm only going to do enough till we get some continuity. All right, so um, I'm, I'm uh, behind on my comments. Uh, Bounty Hunter is saying there's also a hockey themed game and Star Wor Wordle. Is it? Oh no, Star Wordle. I'm gonna have to be all over that one. And Dave Beck is saying my vocabulary may need a boost, but I'll try it. Me too. I'm kind of the worst with those like word games. I always have to cheat and like, you know, Google it. <laughs> Oh, and Dave has reminded me to tapity tap tap. Tapity tap. And Bounty Hunter saying, today's word might be associated with rain or a delicious chocolate cake. Ooh. Yes. Now there is one light right here that is not winding up. And I'm wondering if his, ooh, I wonder if his negative got buried. Let's see. This guy here. They're all lighting up. Yeah. 
one. But that one's not right either. Oh, yes, it is the one near my finger. All right, so there is one red one that's not lighting up, and it's a, one of those big old LEDs. So I'm wondering if his. wire got left behind so i'm gonna put you guys on the overhead before we move on kind of like nestled right in here all right let me see if i can uh, pull on it right there and i'm wondering He didn't like it. And let's see if he he works. So I probably got his positive end. Please don't say you burnt out already. Nope, there he is. So why are you not lighting up? I'm gonna guess that I didn't get you here. And I'm gonna have to tuck you in somehow. Things pretty tight in there. I am just going to move you guys over here for a sec. Or move you guys over here. Because you should be lighting up by now. Maybe I didn't crab enough. Just below the eraser. He's not coming out easily, so maybe he is tapped in, but I'm wondering why he is not lighting up. The only dead one. Big dead LED. So he's working. There he was. Not hooked up at all. Maybe it's the positive that's not hooked up. No, no. Let me trace this positive, and it would make sense because this positive is like hidden here. Oh, oh. Suck if this is what I think it is. Oh, much hate. Much hate you are bearing. Yes. He's not hooked up on the positive end. All right, what can I to tap you in? To tap you in. I'm just going to make a jumper. All right, let me show you guys what the heck it is I'm looking at. All right, let me prep you though. Let me prep you. Get you guys all ready 
for the view of Ophel. The view Ophel. All right, brace yourself. Let me move him back so he focuses all nice and good. All right. So. I glued a LED on top of the lead. That's why I didn't, uh, you know, glued an LED flame on top of the lead. And that's why I didn't see it. So this guy right here that I'm clamping onto, I'm going to run a jumper and just jump him up to the top here rather than trying to like infuse him somewhere in this hot mess. So let me do that before I forget um, to do it because I will. And for this, I'm going to switch back to the red wire. Look at me remembering, remembering stuff. All right. And I will definitely get this all insimilated. In I'm just wrapping the wire around the little resistor. There we go. Let's get that soldered. Solder. Depending on where you're from. If you're from overseas, it's soldered. In the US, it's soldered. I tend to interchange. All right, so let me get a little, the tiniest piece of one of my little skinny guys here that I have. Oh, let's see if we can tap into there. Here. And cut, cut, cut a glue. Now I may not be able to get in. It's so in the flames that I probably can't shrink this. Uh, let me just shrink the one end of it real well and it'll, it'll insulate enough. Insulating. And uh, I'm like so concentrated on like what I'm doing that I'm, I'm usually much better with like with the commentary. And I've been thinking about the words with associated with rain um, or delicious chocolate cake, but I keep focusing on the delicious chocolate cake. Mm, delish. Uh, and Bounty Hunter, oh, Dave Beck was saying, was this LED one the one we glued or another gremlin no totally different gremlin so it was a full-on led the gremlin we glued was not letting anything light up it was just a short in the whole system so it was where a wire was going on top of a resistor which is fine you know that's that's insulated enough for me for you know my my purposes but um you know so if this is the resistor the wire was passing through and say my fingers are the uh, you know, wire, it slipped and the wire came in contact with the wire. So what I did was slip that wire back on top of the resistor and glued. So that way these two wires can't touch, uh, no touchies uh, anymore. So that was that problem. The other problem was an entire, everything else was lighting up great except just one LED. And I know it was one of the big LEDs and those leads are easy to miss because they get buried. Uh, so now I recall to create the fan effect that I was going for, I had to glue an LED flame ball on top of a positive lead, but there was still plenty lead to be able to tap into. Well, it got like um, wedged and going all within the flames, beautifully might I add, uh, but inaccessible. And it was like down here and mostly I was working hunched up here. So now that I saw it, I got it, I got it. So once I tap this into this, Theoretically, all the ones should light up that we've done so far. We don't have very many more to do. 
So I'm just going to uh, paint, paint, paint real quick. Just give it a little dap dap a -roo. And, you know, be nice if you guys could see what I'm doing, right? So rude. All right, my fingers are cold so that the iPad is like unresponsive a little bit. You know, like when you try and operate the phone with really cold hands and the buttons don't always work, like touch screens are the worst. I used to have a camera, a camcorder, and uh, filming things outside, like, you know, doing oil changes and brake jobs and things, my very first videos. And in the winter, it was horrible because you couldn't, you could barely operate this camera. You can get it to record and stop, but all the other settings were touch screen. And if your hands got too cold, well, then you couldn't operate the camera. It just wouldn't, it wouldn't do anything. It was unresponsive. So I used that camera for many years, but then yeah, it got upgraded, <laughs> got upgraded. So I upgraded my computer camera for when we do coding and things like that. But I think I'm going to swap that camera, which is a real deal camera, for this. Because I noticed this has trouble maintaining focus as soon as you start getting hands in here. Um, it's nice and small, which is great for tabletop work. I'm not like running into it. But the one I have is also kind of compact. So I'm going to try that one for the next time. See if I like that one better. All right. So we're going to tap into here. Oh, I'm like looking for the wire stripper, but I'm just going to strip it with my bare hands. Chuck Norris style. I don't know if you guys are Chuck Norris movie fans, like um, Walker, Texas Ranger, all that. The roundhouse kick, always my favorite. And if you like Expendables, um, uh, Sylvester Stallone, Jason Statham, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And the second one... Uh, Chuck Norris makes a cameo. It's great. Sometimes I think I like the second one more than I like the first one. It's kind of like an action movie. You know, don't uh, don't judge. Maybe a predictable story and all, but it's just like every character in their most like stereotypical role. Arnold doing his thing. Stallone doing his thing. Uh, they had Jet Li, of course, with all his moves. And uh, Jason Statham, if you like action. So if you have not seen any of them, I highly recommend it. The third one, it was good. You know, it, it wasn't as good as the first two. And now supposedly they're coming out with a fourth. But rumor is, and this is public, so I'm not spoiling anything. I thought uh, rumor is that so they're going to kill off Sylvester Stallone, which is the main character of The Expendables. So... Oh, kind of sad about that. All right, so we have only one, two more to do. And we're done. This, we're going to put our, our wizard on before we, you know, tackle this because this is going to happen in the cape. Um, although I may go ahead and put uh, resistors on these just to kind of like, you know, get that done beforehand. So the wizarding of all this. So after we get done all this wiring, make sure everything works uh, on my own. I'm going to go ahead and pretty this up pretty this up, you know, and, and all that, get our wizard painted and get the next step of the assembly complete. Now, I did shave this off, didn't I? Uh, let me do a quick test and make sure that it works. Um, and I know the battery test is kind of annoying, but it's just something about when you see the dimness or the brightness of the light too. I like having that visual cue as well. Uh, so you'll see me with the Oh, don't forget this guy right here. Oh, he is trying to be forgotten on purpose. Just to really jack me up. All right, so I'm going to start wrapping as I do with the insulation. And this guy too. Let's just start wrapping the both of these. Insulation and all. Until they make... Not the prettiest. If it were any thicker wire, then yeah, we would be um, tapping and cutting and only dealing with, you know, the one wire. But 
I just need to make sure that this will tap in. So I may have to tap this one in first. Never mind. Abort. Let me tap that one in first real quick. I'm very tempted to cut these. I may get brave and we do it. We do it, guys. So we don't end up with this like huge wiry mess here. Because it's a straightaway um, before we were tapping in and making 90 degree bends, which was kind of problematic with these little wires. Um, so let me get this one. Oh, this one I'm definitely going to have to. Oops, he broke off. That's okay. I'm going to move him aside. I know where he goes. He goes right there. Let's just kind of move you over here. Yeah, we got a lot of bare wires going on here. So let's insulate. And we may have to dab some glue. Actually, I might do that first. Let me create a glue barrier. Before we get started, which is probably what I should have done, is create a glue barrier. I don't need any of this stuff. But the problem is what we discovered the last time. What if there's a problem? Then we got a hot, gluey mess. But we've been testing, and it's been working out. So I think we're good to glue there. And I'm going to let that set just for a second. And prepare a little bit of a barrier here, an extra barrier. All right, I think I'll do about like that, just a little bit. And the scissors, the scissors right in front of my face. gonna close it up on the bottom here and uh, let's see bounty hunter uh, was saying um, uh, look look at you go with the wire wrapping and you're saying you're not wire wrapped before mm. I've done like textbooks like wire wrapping you know um, sometimes I the simplest solutions like evade me because of that so yeah that's a bad habit that I'm trying to break uh, and uh, Bounty Hunt. Oh, Firewalker. Yeah. Firewalker. And uh, Dave Beck says, oh, yeah, Chuck did all the Walker stuff in Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, was it really filmed? I mean, I imagine it was all filmed in Texas, but you never know sometimes with, like, movie sets and stuff. And I, I personally have never looked it up if he really filmed in Texas. But, man, I used to watch that show. Uh, Chuck says he sees some black shrink tube. Heck, yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you crab, maybe. Yes. I'm going to continue my crab walks, you know, because it has served us well, except for the one little thing that I did not see. That's when the, the only time the crab walk failed. But I do enjoy me. And then his movies, too. They're all on, you know, I catch them on, you know, Amazon Prime, all that kind of stuff can go back and watch some of the old ones. Sometimes they'll have it for free. So like I watch when they promote certain movies and then, you know, their algorithm, once they know what you like, they start to promote like um, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Steven Seagal, like all that stuff. I'm like, gimme, gimme, <laughs> I'll watch, I'll watch it all. And it's good, it's all good, good quality stuff. We got some good uh, today's movies as well. I'm not going to say uh, we don't, but I don't know. There's something about some of the older movies that are awesome. Not to sound like, like an old lady or something like, back in my day, honey. Movies were good. 
and I never did I oh yeah I never soldered this go me let's solder this there we go I get to chatting with you guys And Dave is saying, Chuck has a picture on the wall on some Garland restaurants. Really? Oh. Oh, that he used to frequent. That's cool. I love to go to the places and then all on their wall. Like sometimes the old pizza parlors will have it. And um, there's a sub shop in Atlantic City. Uh, that has a lot of people and of course here in Philly you have the Pats versus Gino so each wall is adorned with you know their own celebrities and things of people who have come in so all right that's done its thing I'll go ahead and oh this one's gonna be rough to push down make sure I'm not marring up the dragon Just need it to twist ever so a little bit more. There we go. Not the cleanest wiring, but you know. If it works, that's my bar for this. This is the, my first attempt at fire, this much fire glue effect. Like I've done the little single, little torch, um, castle on fire type stuff done now but this many arranged it's a bit much but I think it'll end up looking kind of fun there we go I think I think I got them all except these two I saw some not lighting I was like uh oh I freaked out okay so now we just have these guys right here that I mingled kind of. And let's see, am I going to cheat? I kind of feel like it, guys. I just straightened these out a little bit because they got all like super curled. And I'm trying to straighten them out in the most delicate way possible. There we go. Now, oh, I did not solder this, did I? I don't remember if I did or not, so let's just hit it. Hit it one more time. Let's hit it. Hmm. Go here. Let me tin tin away. And to make you guys easier to see, let me. Let me hug you. There. Now that should be soldered. Now, could I? Yeah, maybe I'll I'll keep these guys long because I am now going to do this. And where they hit is towards the end here, so I am going to use. A bit of tubing, tuberosity. And let me see if I can find one that's. And we have a layer of glue down here. So even if I, theoretically, if I left it na naked, it should be fine, but I don't want to leave it naked. Let's see if I can get this guy in here. He seems to be a good size. I don't have to paint in this second. Oh, he needs to be a little bit shorter. Let me see if I can cut him on the thing. Actually, I'll cut him right here where he meets the other. This is a mini marathon stream. We've actually had much, much uh, longer streams. But 
We're too close. We are too close to the end. To give up now. Darn it. I want to see this thing light up. And I'll even close the lights for us to get the best effect possible. The piece is a strand. Give me lip. All right. Don't make me bust the diva. I am not only going to bust out the diva, but I'm going to uh, unleash my leopard print uh, slippers. So. like fighting is like no I don't want you to finish this project tonight and I'm like oh you are hilarious because I'm going to and it will work in glorious fashion there I said it at the expense of maybe jinxing Just getting this end here closed just enough. And then we'll uh, we'll do it for reals. All right. This guy, I'm gonna start with his insulation. wrap up and let's get that soldered in place Ooh, after that it looks like we only have one and then we can confirm hopefully we don't have any stragglers I will jump wire them and just bring them all the way to the end here which might have been one way to do it is jump everything make it equally length and then just uh, make them all go into one. Well, I think we would have ended up with the same kind of uh, same kind of uh, bulk here no matter what we would have done. I kind of went nuts with uh, adding a bunch of LEDs because I thought it would look cool. So there. Okay, I'm starting with the wrapping of the insulation part. And the idea is that hopefully wrapping the insulation all the way down to the little tip will make the joints stronger. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. All right. So theoretically, this is our final wire. So I think. Start over here. back and forth on the solder maybe a little more necessary but let's see I am going to now tie these two together no I'm kidding <laughs> normally it would not surprise me if I did at this point all right I think I got them all except for the little blinky blink ones, which, you know, we can do with the, um, you know, the, the, uh, wizard, wizard, that's it. Now I'm playing Wordle, Wordle with myself. <laughs> so, oh, I am like moving a bunch on the table. So I'm going to move this uh, heat gun or glue gun over here. And guys, I don't know, let's shut off some lights and see the grand finale. So I'm going to move you <laughs> over here to the end of the table again let you guys hang out there and my phone's in the kitchen so i rigged my phone to use the lutron to turn the garage lights on and off i left it in the kitchen oh no so let me position them and i'm gonna go turn the lights off and i'll be back let's see Let me put him in the most beauteous pose for the grand finale. And I swear, if you don't light up, I'm going to have issue with you.
dragon. We're going to start having some mean words to each other. All right. I'm going to turn off this overhead light here. All of a sudden, the darkness is starting. I'm going to turn off this fan. And I'm going to turn off the lights. I'll be back next time. I'm going to have my little Lutron controller. And we should be good. There we go. And I'm going to turn off both studio lights. So hopefully I can manage to get there without tripping over a whole bunch of stuff. All right. So the blue light helps. The blue light at least helps me navigate where I'm going. Like a black figure. It almost looks like a music video. <laughs> All right. So let's hope I can hook up the positive with the positive and the negative with the negative here. In the dark. Now, which color is which? Oh, the blue distorts the color. You know, and that's the worst. If you have to disarm a bomb and there's like, you know, a, a color, like a club color. In the club, it changes the color of the wiring. Not bad, guys. That looks kind of cool. That's pretty neat. So, the only things that are missing are right next to his head here. We do have some blinking red ones. And that's with, uh, you know, this pile of wires here that we haven't gotten to yet. Uh, we're going to tackle them with the wizard. And... On this edge right here, it's a little light because we have two blue flickering big LEDs, which you guys can see. But the ones after that are also the blinking variety, which means they're not hooked up yet. So this is looking, ooh, if I could uh, not wiggle around, that's looking pretty good. I'm liking that. So there's going to be, in that center explosion, we are missing two blinking uh, blue LEDs. So the, <laughs> the, the uh, wizard side of things is looking a little weak right now, you know, because he is missing all of his LEDs except those two blinking blue ones. I do like, it looks like the color does a good job of reaching the ends of our glue. So theoretically, if I stick some plugs in there, some glue plugs, we should be able to make this explosion look bigger and uh, even out, you know, the effect a little bit. So all the glue you see here actually has embedded LEDs. So we can fix a little bit of the flame effects as well. So I'm liking this, guys. Yes, go us. Nailed it. <laughs> so... <laughs> Let me um, turn on the light here and so I can talk to you guys and we can congratulate ourselves. Congratulate ourselves a little bit here. All right, because we deserve it. Deserve it. As I walk towards you guys, I'm patting myself on the back. So pat, so pat on the back. Oh, I forgot a couple lights here. And next project is putting the studio lights on a relay. So I can turn them on and off as well. Or a big extension cord where that has a power strip and then you can just, uh, you know, toggle the power on and off, you know, so I could do that as well. Oh, but I do have smart plugs. Uh, I forgot about that. I did mention that to you guys, but then I forgot that I did even mention it to you guys. All right. So, um... <laughs> Dave Beck is saying, look out, Leopard Diva. See what happens? Not only did I bust out the Diva, but the Leopard came out as well. Like, you know. And we talked about Chuck Norris and uh, Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. So this project was getting the idea. It better, you know, wise up <laughs> to what we're doing. And uh, Bounty Hunter is saying, that totally looked like a fireball leaving the dragon's mouth. It, I think we kind of create, we fooled, we fooled some people <laughs> into creating this effect with the, uh, with the hot glue fire. That actually ended up working out really well. Uh, and in the light, yeah, you could tell it's hot glue, uh, but I'm kind of glad that we went with a translucent because I think once I put the other plugs and we fluff up some of the fire, it's going to look better uh, than, than what it looks now. But it did look just like it's shooting out of the, the dragon's mouth. Um, and Dave is saying the mage is just resting for the big fight. He is, yes. You know, he's like, I'm not going to use up all my power. The dragon's all like, look at my glowing gloriousness. And the mage is like, I'll give you two blue blinking LEDs. Yeah got to work a little harder to get the rest. <laughs> All right, guys. So thank you so much for joining me on 
it, like I would say that this is a mini marathon stream. We have done mega marathon streams. This is like, you know, we're it's, it's a mini, but you guys have a uh, good uh, stamina uh, and, and you stuck it through. So thanks for that. So uh, my homework now is uh, to put on the rest of the glue. Now that we know this all works, I'm going to go ahead and wire the rest of the uh, resistors onto here. Make sure that all works. Paint up our little mage. Uh, and then we're going to start the rest of the assembly now i think the dragon once i put the glue plugs on is going to be at the point where i can put him in the castle and i think i'd rather do that so we can cape the cape around and put the end of the cape through a window and i have a lot of extra fireballs that we can use that it's almost like the the mage flew out of an exploding window you know and then he was flying around and fighting the dragon now and this part of his cape is still inside the castle so I think I think we can sell that effect as well. So I think in order to do that, I'm going to try and get this guy on, you know, on the castle once I do the plugs, because it's nice. I have all the access here. Once he's on the castle, I will not have any access here. So um, I think I think that's the plan. And then we can continue on, guys. This is so exciting. This is so exciting. So I will see you guys next time, next next bat week, same bat channel, same bat day. Uh, although, you know, I kind of feel like uh, let's just, just get moving with this project. So check the schedule. I'm going to add an additional day for next week. Um, that way I can get him up because I think we're going to have to attack this in a two part thing. So it doesn't end up being a huge mega marathon. Again, we might divide it into two days, um, so that we, we don't get tired. All right. And, and we're not like a soldering and uh, positive to negative and then wondering why it doesn't work and why there's a short. <laughs> All right, guys. So catch you next time. Head over to Discord if you have any ideas or afterthoughts on like, oh, let's do this, let's do that. Or let's, you know, fix this in a certain way. I am all ears. Catch you later.